the knapsack problem. We went to, into the supermarket and we were lucky. Everything was free at that day. But we have a bag and this bag has size. We cannot have more items than what the bag can carry, okay? So let's say we have um, five items, like one item, with a size five, and the price is five as well. We have another item. So now we have five items. And we have a bag, our bag. Let's say this is the bag. So this is the bag size is 10. I cannot have any item that weight more than 10. Okay. So any of these items can fit in my bag. My bag is 10, this item is 10. This is just three, seven, four, five. But I want to maximize the price. I want to maximize the value that I put in this bag. So what options do I have? I can have five and four. I can have five and three. I can have a four and three. I can have seven and three. So those are how many options? One, two, three, four. I have four options. So if I take this and this, I will have 10. That's the value I can get. And if I have five and three, the value that I will get is eight. And if I have four and three, the value is still eight. If I can get the seven and three, the value is 10 again. So the values that I can get is either eight or 10. Okay, so obviously 10 is more. I can also take this item uh, it, it, it weight net 10, but the price is just two, so it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. I'm not gonna take it. So the best thing is to get 10, right? That's the maximum I can get. How can I make this maximum? I have two options. I can either take these two items, four and five, or take these two items, seven and three, okay? And this program that I'm gonna solve, it doesn't matter which one to take. Um, if you understand my code, if you understand what I'm going to teach you, you'll be able to write any program. You'll be able to write a program that will tell you all the options, like it will tell you that you can take these or these, for example. Or it can tell you that we have two options without telling you which one. You can do whatever. But just to make it simple, I will write a program that it, if there is a solution like that, it will just type on the screen the maximum profit I can get, like 10. Okay, just to make it easy. And if you understood it, you'll be able to do anything. So here is the thing. If there is one solution, I just want to print 10. So if there is one solution, just one solution, in this one solution, this item will be exist in the solution or not? Maybe yes, maybe no, right? I don't know. So for this item, how many options do I have? Just two. Either it exists in my solution or it doesn't, right? What about this? The same. What about this? Also the same. So for each item, I have two options. Either it exists in my solution or it doesn't. So uh, how many items do I have? Five. So the number of ways that I can solve this problem is five items. Each item has two solutions, so it's two to the power five. That's the number of solutions, which is the product of the number of options that I have for each item. So two times two times two times two, whatever. That's a big, that's a, a big complexity. If, if I have like a hundred items, that will be two to the power hundred, so that's a lot. Okay, I will teach you how to write a program that will solve this problem in, in this complexity. And then, of course, this is a very bad complexity. This is very bad. And then we will do a trick, a programming trick in the program 
that it will solve this program that I wrote with this complexity, but just one trick, one small trick, will, will make this complexity five to the power two. Okay? Let's do it, let's do the code. To write the code, let's open Safari, or any browsers, of any browser, of course, and ide1.com. Okay. We have n, the number of items, and we have b, let's say bag, the bag limit, 10. Then we have the weight of the five items. Five, four, seven, three, ten, and the price of the five items five, five, seven, three, two. See out. Solve. This is the function that we are going to write. Zero means we want to try the first element, the element number zero. And the bag right now has nothing. So the second zero is the weight that is already right now inside the bag. There is nothing inside the bag. And then end line, let's write our function. Okay. Now we have two options in here. Option. Option one. Equal zero. And option two equals zero. Option one means that this element, the, the first element, is, is in my solution. And option two means that the first element is not in my solution. So, in my solution means that I will put it in the back. So I will say if the size of the first element, w of i, plus what's already in the bag is b. If together, these together are less than or equal, the limit of the bag, in this case, I can take this item into my consideration and put it in the solution. So I'll say option, option one, equals if I took this item in my bag it means that the value is what what I will get so I will say b of i I will get this value plus the value of, of trying the other elements I want to try some other elements in the bag as well so I write solve Try to take the next element, which is i plus 1. And the bag now has the b, what, which was already in the bag, plus the w of i, which the item that i took right now. So this is the first option. The second option, 2 is that I will not take this item with me. This item is not in my solution. So it means that I will not add the price. I will go to the next item. 
5 plus 1. And the bag, what's in the bag will remain, will remain exactly in the bag. Just like I'm ignoring this item. I'm not going to take it. I don't have its value. I don't have its weight. And now I will see. If I took the item and and tried maybe some other item from the next set, I will get the maximum value. Or if I didn't take this item and tried other items in the list, I might take more value. I don't know which one will give me more value. So I will say here return. The biggest one, if option one bigger than option two, in this case, return option one. Otherwise, return option two. Now, there is only one thing left. This is a recursion. So every item I will try either to put it in the bag once or not to put it in the bag to try it in, in both ways. And each item will try the next one. Each item will go check the next one. So until I reach the end. So because it's recursion, there must be a base case. What is the base case here? If I equal equal n means I reached the end, there is no any more it any items to choose, then return zero. As there is no items to choose from, of course there is no value, so I will return zero. Now the solution is complete. Let's try it. Run. I got 10 which is the correct answer. Okay. Now we want to add the trick that I told you about. So what is the problem here? What, what is the problem why this program takes a long time to run? Why the complexity is so big? The problem is that this recursion call itself so many times. So many of them will be repeated. And how will I know that it's repeated if the i and b together are the same, then this function is repeated. So what I need to do is that I want to store every i and, and b, every, every i and b that I took before, I want to store it somewhere so that so that if it's repeated, I will know that it's repeated and I will stop it from repeating. How will I do that? I will make a two-dimensional array, I'll call it answer, and I will put inside it the maximum that I can have in i, which is 5, and the maximum that I can get in b is 10. And I will go to the main, I will say memset, uh, answer, sorry, answer, negative one, size of answer. So I will set all the elements and answer to be negative one. And here's the thing. When I go to any recursion, i and b, any recursion, i and b, before I return the answer, I will say answer of i and b equals this solution. So store the solution first and answer on i and b before you return it. Why I chose here negative one? Because all the answers is either zero or more. So negative one is not in my solutions. So if there is an answer here, it will be stored here. And when, when, when it's a stored in answer, so answer doesn't have negative one anymore. So that next time when I call the same recursion, before I do any operation, I will ask this question. If answer of i and b not equal negative 1 it means that I already solved this before so don't go into the, the solution 
and return directly what you stored in I and B. That's it for now. Before I uh, finish my program, I just want to tell you that this solution is not good. This is not the best way to solve it. This is just the easiest way to solve it. So I am given this material just for educational use. Do not use this in any interview. Do not use this in your work. The best way to solve this problem is the iterative method. Do not use recursion in it. And I will do that in another video, but right now I'm doing this just to understand how to solve the knapsack. Oh, we didn't add the function, the header file, string.h.